Welcome to a lonely, lonely <laughs> a lonely I Write Radio podcast and video cast. My name is Stuart Lockhead. Under circumstances that I'm beyond my control, I'm on my own. So we'll have a go at this today. Just give you a couple of uh, short reports. We had uh, PMQs today. And I have to say the first, the Prime Minister had quite an easy ride because Keir Starmer, the leader of the opposition, he was he wasn't there. He was in he was virtual again, you know, on the screen on TV. It never works well on the House of Commons. It just doesn't work. Was there anything of import? Edward Lee got the first question before the Prime Minister said his usual introduction. Um, Edward Lee mentioned himself as a spear carrier during the Brexit campaign. Um, Strength comes with unity, he quoted, and you're thinking, this is the kind of rubbish that Boris himself talks about, you know, the Greco-Roman kind of, never mind, I nearly said something rude there. I did write here, by the time the Prime Minister opened his gob, he said, I reckon he was negotiating by bullhorn because he's he's going to rush off to Brussels tonight and meet with ooh, Von Leiden, I think, Ursula Von Leiden, is that her name? Having dinner. Ooh. I wonder if Carrie knows. The first question from Keir Starmer was about vaccinations, and he quoted the Prime Minister. We would have a permanent break from talking about Brexit. How's it going, says Keir Starmer. Well, obviously, it's not going very well on that basis. I'm going not to, I don't think even the question was about how the Brexit negotiations were going, but how's it going about not talking about it? He did mention, this is the Prime Minister, he did mention um, an Australian deal once, twice, three, four times. And that was before, and, and I didn't even wait, get, wait till the end, because by that time it was time to switch over to the Scottish Government press uh, briefing. 50,000 customs agents. If that was Keir Samer's final question, how many... 50,000 customs agents had they actually hired ready for the 1st of January. I never got an answer to that. There's your PMQ's report. I'm sure I've not missed much. I avoided the questions to the Scottish Secretary, Union, Ian Union Jack. Uh, I've got a weak heart I, and I can't stand watching the humiliation of the SNP MPs every Scottish questions, because that's all we get. I do not understand why they bother turning up for it, why Ian Blackford stands up for it. They shouldn't be there, because it's it's appalling. It's it verges on racism, sometimes it is racist, but they get away with it in the House of Commons. So we now we move on to a uh, report on the press briefing, which was actually quite interesting today. It wasn't just a patting patting themselves on the back because we got the vaccination program going, but there was, you know, the first minister introduced that. We discovered that Gene Freeman will launch a cancer recovery plan tomorrow, which I was the cynic in me. So I was thinking, well, okay, that's like another launch. But hopefully that's a bit more meat to it than that, because obviously one of the key aspects of health that suffered in Scotland have been in particular cancer patients and I have personal, I care personally about that. We had a, we had a report about reports from the First Minister. She uh, told us about a report about students and that 3,000 student postcodes, this was about the outbreaks at the beginning of term uh, what did we discover? Nothing new there. The, another report was a Public Health Scotland update. Details on the testing of asymptomatic people. Again, the first <laughs> students again were talked about here. Apparently two, 22,000 tests were done. That makes 11,000 people as far as I know, because they had to be tested twice for the, because they were using the lateral flow testing. This was asymptomatic people testing before, I think the students, this was before they could go away for Christmas. We'll find out if this 
system about when they come back is useful in protecting people from uh, the travel impact of the students coming and going over Christmas. Uh, there are also six locations for mass testing, and I think these are scattered across Scotland. I think Johnston was a key one. They had a real problem there. 13,000 tests were done there. Four, they discovered 426 positive people with no symptoms. That's a 3% return, even if they, even they didn't have symptoms. So I'm not sure what, we, what the consequences of that will be yet. And then the final report was, I think, the most interesting one. It came from SAGE, the UK-wide adv uh, Clinical Advice Committee. And they were talking about genome, a genomic study where they could actually trace where the different strains of the virus came, come from or went to. Uh, there were two specific studies done, one in Wales and one in Scotland. In general terms, the report was saying that uh, inward and outward travel uh, had restarted the pandemic again after the summer lockdown. And this was the same in both Wales and in Scotland. Um, Jason Leach, well, he, made a, he made a report himself. Who was he speaking to? Oh yes, well, he, can, he, he, he made a specific report on the report, the genomic report, reports and reports and reviews of reviews. I've got, got that to come as well. You just wait. We had, what did he say? He praised, first of all, Jason, he play, praised five people by name who had been have directly involved in the launch of the vaccination program. I'm not going to name them. Um, he also, also flagged up the fact that normally this time of year they'd, they'd be handing out the NHS awards for excellence uh, or whatever they're for. Uh, that would normally be in the Corn Exchange in Edinburgh, but that's online. So you can, he gave us uh, um, an internet address to go and watch it online. Uh, what else did we discover about the genomic studies from J Jason Leach? There were 300 different strains. The lockdown practically eliminated, well, summer lockdown in Scotland practically eliminated the virus, but the strains came back in from abroad and from across the UK. The end of the reports. Uh, one or two items to tell you about the Journalists, I'm going to be polite today about them, I think. Uh, the BBC, the ed, yes, as expected, the non reduction of the Edinburgh from level three to level two, because this didn't, didn't happen, that was the first topic and it came up two or three times too. Um, the first minister explained that in the end she just admitted it wasn't down based on the science, it's more based on the anticipation of people coming in, going shopping. She was asked, <laughs> she was accused by, I forget which um, a journalist, but she was accused by one journalist of being uh, anti Edinburgh. I can think of somebody I know who's actually expressed their. Um, Belief that uh, she's uh, pro Ouija, but we'll see about that. I am a Ouija who lives in Edinburgh, so didn't he pick on me? Um, border, the guy from bo the border television, as usual, cross asked a question about the English border. They always ask a question about the English border. They're obsessed with the English border down there. But even when you, I've lived there, eight years I lived in the borders, and you don't think about the English border all the time, but their journalists do. No wonder they worry about it so much. We didn't discover much there. Questions was about genomic. Uh, south, did they come, did it come from south of the border? Um, no real answer on that. Uh, a question about disab disabled people's bubbles in England, though there's another thing that the journalists are always asking. If it happens in England, why doesn't it happen in Scotland? Oh, is, is England worse or better than Scotland? Uh, they always ask the same questions. Honestly, I'm nearly finished. Um, commensurate measure, loss of life. Oh yes, uh, Scottish care. This is a fellow from PA, Tom Eden. Um, I think there was a question here was, yes, the question was, 
where people, the Stanford care homes, were they unable to give the vaccination because of lack of insurance? Jason Leach made clear that that was not the case. It was simply the nature of the virus, the logistics of getting the virus around and not on, on normal regulations. Uh, I'm not going to, so uh, that, that he expected that situation to change once the vaccis, vaccination program proceeds further on down. Uh, are we are are we close to eliminating COVID? Um, who asked that? Tom Martin. Oh no, I'm going to leave that one out. And um, she was asked about this is Edinburgh again, and she was asked about she gives the details, explain trying to explain why Edinburgh wasn't left down, uh, taken down to level two, and. Um, she immediately asked a question. It was Simon Johnson of the Telegraph. She immediately asked a question back. Do you think we like to? Do you think? Uh, do, you, do you think we like to do unpopular things? Us politicians like to do popular things. So why do you think I would leave Edinburgh in a higher level when I have to? Who's this fellow here? The guy from the Sun. He took up the rest of this report. King's College London, he came up with and yet another report. Uh, I'm not going to, so what, what did it say? Was Scotland doing any better? Uh, and the first minister said, well, look, here's a BBC graph from this week, Scotland is doing better. And then they had an argument about whether Scotland was doing better and wasn't. And uh, I think I'll leave it at that. There, I really don't have much else to say today, so I'll let you go. Uh, unfortunately, Jimmy's got a fair. Uh, I don't know why uh, Nori's not turned up today. Could be busy, but uh, thanks very much for uh, paying attention and uh, we'll hope to catch up with you tomorrow.